And this afternoon, President Akufado has finally broken his silence on the university crisis, saying that government is determined to finding a satisfactory solution to the impasse, which will ensure that academic activities is not substantially derailed. The president uh, is uh, speaking at a time where the university lecturers are actually kicking against the decision of their labor union, UTAG, asking them to return to the lecture halls as negotiations continue with government. Already, the National Union of uh, Ghana students. Nukes is actually asking the president to resolve the matter. We'll hear from Nukes uh, shortly, but we also need to tell you about what the president has been saying on this matter. The president has been giving assurances that government will ensure that the academic calendar is not derailed. Listen. Reiterate my appreciation for the relative peace prevailing on the industrial front. I know this relatively stable labor outlook did not happen by chance, but through negotiation and compromise. We therefore need to strengthen the rapport between tripartite partners for greater cooperation. This is important. In the wake of the recent six-week strike action by the University Teachers Association of Ghana, UTAG, Ghana government is determined to find a satisfactory solution to this impasse and ensure that the academic calendar is not substantially derailed. The best form of negotiations are those in which both parties to the dispute exhibit good faith within the context of what is affordable and equitable. I continue to hope that our dons will see this in that light and help bring the impasse to an end so that the education of our young people can resume in serenity. I assure you of government's commitment to addressing your concerns at all times, and I appeal to organized labor to give enthusiastic support and cooperation to government's economic recovery. Government is determined to work with all stakeholders to see us through this crisis and all the challenges well, so that's uh, President Akufando making uh, his very first comment uh, in the long while on the protracted UTAC strike. Uh, let's get the reaction of the University Teachers Association of Ghana on this matter. Fortunate to have Dr. Bet uh, Boydi Kusi, who is the president of the UCC chapter of UTAC. Thanks, sir, for joining us. Uh, also on this matter is Austin Gami. He is a labor dispute re resolution consultant. Uh, he will be uh, talking to us on the wider consultations happening in the Eastern region. Uh, which is being organized by the Employment and Labor Relations uh, Ministry. But uh, first of all, Dr. Bert Kusi, welcome to the show. So you've heard from the president. He says that make sure that you negotiate in good faith within the context of what is affordable. Uh, what does that suggest to you, really, as UTAG? Yeah, thank you very much. And let me say uh, good afternoon to uh, your viewers and uh, uh, all your listeners, if any. But I want to say that... Um, Yes, uh, we commend uh, uh, the president for uh, coming out to indicate that, yes, they are committed to finding uh, an amicable resolution uh, to this uh, matter, which has been, I mean, uh, confronted us for some weeks now. Uh, it's refreshing, and uh, I, as the first gentleman of the land, showing that a great concern we think it is good yes it is indeed right that he says that uh, within that context so as a union we have always had that at the back of our minds that we will go into every negotiation with an open mind and therefore it is not out of place that when we did our own proposals knowing that we may not get everything at a goal we even on our own out of our own propose some level of roadmaps to be able to get us to the level where uh, we think that is acceptable for the university lecturer uh, to be. So we are clear in our minds when we, we, we are going to the negotiation table that, yes, we may not get everything at a goal, but it's also important that uh, within the context of the discussion, looking at what is affordable, what uh, the national kitty is able to support and all that, let's come clean let the employer let the government come clean 
on what they think it's uh, within 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 the kit within the economic and, situation. And for many, that's a signal to indicate that you're not willing to act in good faith. Uh, particularly as you know that government has a tight fiscal space already. Uh, we're getting indications that there's increasing resentment to the decision of your leadership to call off the strike. Tell us about that and, and how the voting is actually panning out, particularly at UCC where you are, uh, and indications that we're getting from across um, various campuses. Yeah, yes, you see, that there's one thing acting, I mean, uh, if you say acting in good faith, is a different thing about people ex expressing their displeasure about what has gone on for the past seven weeks, where more or less we were at entrenched positions or at a stalemate. So, so, so these are two, these are two different things. UTAC has be, always been clear in our minds that we would want to act in, in good faith. The point is, 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 I've always indicated is all, it's always about trust, that lack of trust, that lack of transparency. And so from our minds, we were clear that if you come with something that is reasonable to us and uh, it might not be giving us all, everything that we are asking for at a goal, but you show that I'm sorry for taking you on, on this point, even before you talk about the uh, trend of voting. But the president yeah. has indicated, for instance, that if you look at the commitment of government within the COVID period, this was a period where uh, almost all of your members were not even working, providing services for that matter. Government was still keeping you in active employment. Is, this that, is the time is to assumption. show good we faith, as, as the president uh, is indicating. No, that's a wrong assumption. We were working. Within the COVID period, university lecturers were working. We were teaching online. That is how come we got our students to graduate. So if we were not working, then there would have, uh, there would have been no graduation at all. Our students wouldn't have written exams. So if, if it's anything, the university lecturers suffered. We had to do back to back. And so, and so we worked. That, that cannot be true. We were working. Right? But the point, the, I think at the broader context is that if you look at several other economies where people were being laid off and all that probably that did not happen in ghana so that is that is also correct but that is not supposed to mean that uh the the lecturer whose condition of service has worsened cannot demand that uh, their issues are, are, are attended to all right right so so, so basically that, that's the context so, so let's let's now deal with the uh, issue about the voting and how the procedure is going across your campuses indication we're getting is that there's a, a wide resentment. What's the implication of that vote um, that, that we're seeing and the outcome of, the, of, of, of what we are seeing right now? Yes, so, so that is a typical constitutional matter uh, for the union. The union has a constitutional provision which says that when the national leadership take a decision of such a magnitude, it must receive ratification from its members. But that same constitutional uh, provision also makes it a provision for the fact that when the campuses are voted, then the national executive will have to come back and look at the situation, whether to call, an, uh, to call a strike again or to resume the strike again or otherwise. So basically, for me, I see it as uh, people expressing their democratic or constitutional uh, exercise. That is what is happening across the campuses. Mm. The indication is that across most of the campuses, they, they, they are rejecting the decision of the National Executive Committee. Of course, my, on my campus, election has just ended. Uh, the Electoral Commission is yet to declare, but I know for sure that uh, roughly around 81% are, are saying no to the decision of NEC. So, uh, I mean, you can't take that away from the people. That is their position. That yes, is but, but I was asking about the implication then. For me, the implication is simple. We, we, it offers, uh, I think that for the employer, it, it gives a good picture to what is happening that, look, the leadership, the National Executive Committee that took that decision is at a huge risk in terms of that decision, the bold decision they made, looking at the information that was available to them because uh, we, were, we were coming out of about a seven week strike mm. where we needed to be uh, seen to obey the courts. We, I mean, that's the most important thing. We need to obey the courts. I mean, we, we, we can't scandalize the courts. And so if on that premise, leadership decide that let us suspend the strike and go and negotiate, and you have the masses disagreeing with them, then it means that the employer should be wary and then also act 
timelessly. So, so yeah, but, but it's not as though this is a directive from leadership or the executives of uh, Utah. This is a court order. You're enjoined by law to respect the decisions of the court. Uh, for instance, the academic activities are supposed to resume today. Um, it appears your members are not even willing to go back to the classrooms. No, 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 that, that's, that cannot be. You see, the court order was one of them. Remember that we did not even resume the strike immediately after the court order. Uh, I mean, our, our, our lawyer, our legal team had, had filed for uh, setting aside the decision. So when, when we took that decision to call up the strike, yes, the court order was one of them, but there were several other factors. And also uh, thinking about our students and the general mm. appeals that were coming in. So th there were multiple factors. But I want to say that I don't think there is any campus that has resisted uh, going to, apart from one campus, but I have just seen a release from that same campus indicating that they have rescinded their decision and they are, they are going to go back to the lecture room. Mm. My campus, for instance, today, lectures are, are ongoing and I'm sure your reporters may have come to, to cross-check. So right, but, but then we, you, you may withdraw that service in the coming days. That, that's the implication. And it's not automatic that we're going to withdraw because the point is that the National Executive Committee is made up of human beings, very uh, reasonable beings. And we, it's not the fact that the votes are, are going on or has happened in that way does not mean that immediately we say that we are resuming, we are resuming. The, we have to look at the circumstance, prevailing circumstances. For instance, if you are negotiating and you are at the table and you know that under the same laws, you cannot be on strike and negotiate then what would be the essence to immediately resume the strike right. uh, when, when indeed you are, you, you are negotiating. So okay. we, we, it's going to be in context. So I'll ask you about later on about what, what the, um, your constitution says about such, such a vote and such a decision. But Austin Gami is also on with us. Uh, thank you, sir, for spending some time with us today. The government uh, is uh, dealing with issues generally on the uh, labor front. And that's not just restricted to issues relating to Utah. Uh, the president says during the COVID, due to the strong economic basis, government was able to handle matters on the labor front appropriately. It's time for labor to also show good faith. Uh, what you're reading out of all that's happening, particularly in the context of UTAG? How did my good <laughs> Can I go on? Uh, Mr. Gummy, you, you, you would have to uh, unmute for us so we can hear you and get the points that you're trying to make, sir. Um, well, we seem to be having some challenges with uh, Austin Gummy there. We we'll, would we'll definitely Come connect in. with him. And, and yes, precisely. Uh, but I need to also indicate that Kwesi Kwarteng is with the Ministry of Education. We'll get the perspective of government shortly. But Mr. Gummy, you are making a point about the call by the president. What's your take, sir? Well, it's an excellent call. This is the right time to say that. Uh, but we have a work, we have all got work to do, especially those who are responsible for the institutions that are to ensure that labor relations is not played out in the court domain again. The labor law is an applicable law. It's not intended in extreme cases, we go to court. That's why we created the Labor Commission. And so it's about negotiating in good faith. And good faith negotiation is not a figure of speech. It's a paradigm shift. If you don't shift, you suffer paralysis. So I want to urge all parties in this matter that it is not about changing the law it's about applying the law. It's about acquiring the skill that is required. Even a simple thing like listening skills is missing in the lexicon of industrial relations in Ghana. People don't listen. That's how. So I think that it's up to all of us, including me, to learn to listen to your other colleague who is speaking mm -hmm. and don't jump to conclusion. Uh, obviously, positions. Uh, obviously, the one expected to have the bigger ear, arguably, should be government. Are you suggesting that government is not listening enough? It's not about government. It's about employer. You can, you can describe him as government, but when you come to employer-employee relationship, there is nothing called government. The reality here is that the employer and the workers' leaders, when they meet, 
the listening we are talking about here is not about what you want. We are picking out positional negotiation out of the, the Labor Act. Section 97 enjoins both parties to share relevant information. You can't share information and go back and take position. You know, I'm, I'm engaged in some negotiation as I speak with you, some right. boy. Right. I can tell you is because we share information, we have virtually reached an agreement in one way or the other. So, at meeting at the table is just a matter of course. But if you take position, I will also take position. You will mm. end up in court. And all of us will be losers. Uh, and that's precisely what's been going on. Right. I, I guess the president is asking UTAC leadership to be um, realistic. If you look at where we are now in terms of the fiscal space, government uh, literally is even having a hard time raising uh, funds to run government business. Uh, this is a time where government is cutting back on public expenditure. And at the same time, UTAG is demanding more. Could this be the reason why the president is saying this should happen within the context of what's feasible? So how do you get them? Let me give you a typical example to answer the question for you. I negotiated representing management with a certain union last week. And when we met, I requested the chief finance officer to produce information from 2018 to 2021 to show the union that they have faithfully and religiously been managing the affairs of the company prudently. When we show the information to the union, the union said, is that the case? There is such explanation we explained to them. At the end of the day, we negotiated for five hours only and signed an agreement and resolved everything. We, are, we have done the same thing today as I speak to you. That's why I'm somewhere else speaking to you now. There have been some ongoing negotiation. They've not been reaching agreement because there's no clear-cut understanding on the issues being raised. We sought clarification. Management explained. The union sought further clarification. Management explained. At the end of the day, we reached a common agreement. If you don't explain, you don't share information, nobody will appreciate where you are. So what's, so what's that? What's that? negotiation is not part of Ghana again. Right. And, and I guess the solution is what we're looking for now. What's that magical piece to solve this puzzle? Well, to be honest with you, I pray that whoever is going to chair that meeting, they are very credible people who can do that, should accept the fact that they have to openly share information, openly, and be open to uh, uh, further giving further particulars if the union demands it. And the union will also appreciate where the dynamics should be placed. Mm. At the end of the day, they will reach agreement. Otherwise, the final solution will be for them to go for either a mediated arbitration of a sort and resolve it because the court cannot give them numbers. Right. The court cannot sit down and give them numbers, but a mediated person, a mediator or arbitrator can be able to probe and come out with the numbers mm -hmm. that will be acceptable to both parties. Right. Uh, considering, and considering the difficulties government have and considering the challenges that my friends in Utah also have. Mm. Uh, Austin Gami uh, is a labor consultant. We're grateful, sir, that you've been able to join us. Dr. Bert Kusi um, is also on with us, but fortunately we need a, a response from government on this matter. Uh, plans here from the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission. First, let me start off with Kwesi Kwateng, who speaks for the Education Ministry. So the president has spoken, in fact, yesterday, students were here on the probe asking the president to resolve the matter. Now he's spoken, and the belief is that things may get worse because it appears government doesn't have the funds to give to Utah. That would mean a deadlock again, and obviously the students would bear the brunt. How about that? Kwesi uh, Kwasin, we seem to be having a challenge here hearing you uh, unmute for us so we can uh, get your point there. Yes, so the point I'm making is the president has spoken, everyone was on the lookout for that, but it appears that he's saying that should be within the context of what's feasible. For many, given the hard times in which we find ourselves, government is simply making another excuse again on this matter. That may end up in another deadlock. Is that, is that a fair suggestion? Are you, are you referring to the UTAG uh, government negotiation? Pre precisely, sir. The president has spoken. Hello. Yes, uh, if, you, if you're with me, the ministry me, is concerned. Right. 
yes, negotiation. Yes, please, please go ahead. Can you please, hear me now? Yes, please go ahead and make the point. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying that so far as uh, the Ministry of Education is concerned, uh, we've actually met, that is the parties involved with uh, The last time we met, it was at the, uh, at the behest of the Minister for Employment and Labor Relations, where we had representatives as usual for all the issues. And uh, so far as we are concerned, we've not really gone into the details of the negotiations. What happened on that very day was about parties bringing out their issues. And so you had time bringing out their issues, government also bringing out their issues. At the end of the day, it's about uh, parties coming out with what relevant issues that we are to resolve. Uh, after those issues were, were brought out, the meeting was postponed to, uh, I think next, that is Wednesday, yes, coming Wednesday. So I don't really get this whole point about mm. government is not really committed about doing right. A, B, or C. I, I really don't get it. Uh, just before Wednesday, I'm sure that you've been monitoring what's happening across the various university campuses. Indications we are getting is that the various local unions are kicking against uh, the suspension of the strike. Are you worried about this as government? Uh, I think it's, 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 for us, uh, it's largely it's a concern. Is a, is a concern within the larger context as uh, the fact that uh, they want to use every means to let their voices or their concerns be heard. So this is why I, they, they want opposition to the decision of, of, of MEC. But like, no, I, I do not speak for you. Know, like, uh, but what we know is that when it comes to the delays and arrangements of UTAC, obviously, is the decision of NEC that rules. And then the decision of NEC obviously has to be the majority of decision. So uh, NEC is made up of, uh, I think, 15 members. And mm -hmm. for the 15 members, what you require is at least eight of them to make a majority decision. And so it really does not matter if one dissents. Yes, you may have dissented uh, during NEC meeting or during engagements at NEC. But at the end of the day, it is the majority decision that holds. It is even the more reason why you had uh, uh, UTAG, the neck of UTAG, apparently issuing a statement suspending their strike. Other than that, it would have been an individual decision that ought to be made by the institution. So, so far as the ministry is concerned, so far as government is concerned, all university teachers have suspended their strike. I mean, you can go to the university. Mm -hmm. the I, I, and I get yes, and, and, the disagreement may be there. Right, and, and I get how confident you are about this, but uh, what we're seeing on the ground um, appears to suggest otherwise. But one more thing, let me pick up on what the president says. He's assuring that the academic calendar will not be derailed. Negotiations will be done in such a manner um, to ensure what I, what I spoke about. Um, given where we are now, the fact that we've gone six weeks past um, the, the whole finding a solution to, to this whole uh, negotiation, uh, does it not suggest that the academic calendar is already disrupted? And what plans are you putting in place um, to redress the situation? Obviously, obviously, we cannot pretend that, I mean, certainly the academic calendar uh, may have been distorted. Because uh, if you look at the academic structure, they plan everything to happen within the year. And then you have almost six weeks of it being distorted. Uh, but uh, I'm sure those consequential decisions that ought to be made uh, has to be made by the academic councils of the various universities. Of course, I mean, if it gets to that stage that the ministry, we may have to be consulted or we may have to be, make our voices said, we, we, we will. But issues of uh, what pertains relative to academic activities uh, are solely made by an academic, but, uh, the academic boss or the academic councils of the various universities, and I'm sure they are capable of making such decisions. But judging from precedence and what we've all witnessed in the past, usually lectures double up their speed. Uh, a lot of times, too, even they have to add weekend lectures, sometimes with the hybrid system uh, has been also adopted. And, and those are measures that uh, have proven to work efficiently when time has been already been lost in, in, in terms of 
academic time. So I'm sure the various academic uh, boards or the academic councils will make those consequential decisions. Mm, Kwesi, your minister has come under scrutiny at this point. The belief is that it's not been effective as a minister in dealing with these matters. There are anxious parents out there wondering what exactly he's doing to contain this. What, what's your message to the um, parents who are out there who are worried about what's happening? The, the, the thought, first of all, let me say that the thought of my minister, the education minister being effective, first of all, is very erroneous and missing. First, this is a clear labor issue. And of course, I'm not suggesting that it means the labor minister is supposed to be ineffective, but all over the world, labor issues are inevitable. I am sure even within the, the premises of joy, there are some outstanding issues that probably borders on employee employment relations that probably are being settled. When those issues come, it's about demonstration of leadership to resolve those issues. It has nothing to do with the inefficiency or, or the incapability of, of a leader. I think what is most important is that those issues are obviously when they come here. Unfortunately, a lot of people had, had engaged in outside the framework of the law. And that government did declare that we're not going to do that. And that position being the favor. That okay. yes, we will negotiate with UTAC. And indeed, we needed to negotiate with UTAC. But that should have done within the framework of the, the law. All right now. Mm. Uh, and unfortunately, time. people are construing that, that to be that government did not make any offer, and, and for that matter, government is in effect. It, has, it is very far from that. Kwesi Kwating, I'm grateful. Um, Dr. Bert Kusi will be wrapping up with you. But first, uh, let me indicate that government is today uh, holding talks in the Eastern region uh, with stakeholders, various uh, labor unions, not just UTAG, uh, to try and address issues on the labor front. So um, let's get more from El Ankara, who speaks for the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission. Uh, he is there at the events grounds himself. Um, El, so what's the essence of this uh, event today, and how would you describe um, the fallout from the event today? Uh, well, El Ankara is down, but uh, let's uh, hear from Dr. Um, Bet Bwedu Kusi, who's uh, still on with us. Um, Doc, so here we are. You've heard from all the stakeholders. In fact, the Education Ministry says it's not as though they've not given you an offer. Why are you not accepting this offer from the Ministry? Oh, let, I, 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 don't, I don't think that uh, he meant that an offer has been given to you. That not at all. No offer has been made. No offer has I been made? Point, the point he sought to make was that uh, they were committed to negotiating uh, with, with UTAC within the context of the law. And once the industrial action was off, then they were ready to, to resume. I think in earlier, one of his statements, he indicated that uh, at our first meeting, we tab officially tabled our demand. And that was where we ended. And we are going into, a new ne we are going into negotiations on Wednesday. A letter has been issued to that effect. So... So long as we are concerned, there has not been a, a, an offer to the union. Th this, will be, this will be shocking if you say an offer has not been made to UTAG ever since you uh, began negotiations with government. No, within the context, remember, remember that uh, this is an industrial action which was called when there was no negotiation. And the government position has always been that suspend your strike and come we are ready to negotiate so that at the negotiation table we can put an offer on the table uh, the, the the strike action was suspended and we moved into our first negotiation meeting on thursday last week it was at this meeting that utac formally tabled all that it had trumpeted within the space and spoken about so i mean to set the record straight there has not been any offer yet we're looking forward to what the government will, I mean, the employer will bring when we meet on, when we meet on, on, on Wednesday. So like, basically, that's, is, this, that's is this why you, you keep repeating the point that you do not trust government um, all throughout the negotiation process? It is, it is one of the reasons why our members are voting the way they are voting. Because the thinking is that, give, I mean, give it whatever name it, it is. At least they expected that the employer would have done something, brought uh, an offer to the table, at least to assure leaders that we are ready to do X, Y. But I mean, I'm sure the labor expects uh, Mr. Mr. Gamme is online. He will tell you that uh, it's the government is also, or the employer is also being cautious, was also being cautious um, because then they were afraid that, well, if they do that, then the strike will never end. 
I mean, and that these things were discussed uh, severally at the table. And so that is why one of the, I said, as I said, Neck was of the view that let's give some overtures to the side of, uh, of the employer mm. and let's see officially what they, then the, the counter proposal uh, will be. So as, you, so, so as you go into that negotiation on Wednesday, what's your expectation in a minute? Well, we, we are expecting that as it has been re echoed, they will come with all, all honesty and with all transparency. I mean, that is what we, we, we are looking for so that we can be honest, fair to ourselves, and then look at exactly what the counter proposals are right. within the context as we all want it. And then we can also evaluate what has been proposed mm. uh, on its value and then make a decision. Right. Uh, I guess you are all on the same page. Good faith is what you want. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bert Kusi Boydu, uh, for uh, joining us. El Ankara is uh, with the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission. In fact, uh, he's in the Eastern region and has more for us. Uh, El, what's your impression of today's engagement? Uh, El Ankara, if you can hear me, I'm asking about the National Labour Conference, which is happening in the Eastern region. Um, your impression of day one and what are you expecting as the outcome from, from today's engagement. Uh, Elan Kreis is uh, off the lines uh, again, but we need to thank you, uh, gentlemen, for joining us uh, here on The Pulse.